Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome here to the mountains of Colorado and welcome to the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. This is probably something you're not expecting. We are taking the Taycan Cross Turismo on an adventure off-road. And part of this adventure is what I want to see is the capabilities of the car. Sort of articulation, traction, uh, the management of the Porsche-specific gravel mode, how it can get power down to the wheels that need it the most. And well, I think we found the perfect obstacle to test the car and push it I would say right up to its limits. So let's do this. Let's get it lined up. I'll show you around the car, tell you a little bit about it, tell you about some of the very light modifications that we've done to make this a little bit easier. And then of course, we're gonna drive it up this pretty cool obstacle. This is the 2021 Taycan Cross Turismo. This, of course, you've seen on our channel many times. The Cross Turismo is the long roof, off-road cred capable sort of Porsche version. You guys know the regular Taycan slopes down in the back is really low slung and well, Porsche decided to make a little bit more of an adventure vehicle here and that's what we're putting to the test. The Cross Turismo gets higher ride height than the normal Taycan. It also gains this black plastic cladding and this particular one has the off-road design package with some underbody protection. Not necessarily skid plates, but should help keeping the rocks off the paint, which is always very important when we're playing around on very sharp rocks with a $100,000 plus vehicle, of course. This particular one has almost no modifications except for the wheels and tires. They're on Falcon Wild Peak AT tires, which is not a tire you would expect to see on a Porsche, <laughs> which is awesome. Maybe a Cayenne, but certainly not a Taycan. But here, this is a new world. We're exploring electric off-roading and overlanding. Uh, this one's a 225-55 R19. In the rear, I believe they're 235, 55R19, so really nice combination of tire size, good looking wheels, of course. These are the types of cars that you see out on the trail, lifted Tacomas with some stuff, and here we are with a wagon Porsche <laughs> that's fully battery electric. This particular one, of course, all-wheel drive. Every Cross Turismo comes standard all-wheel drive. It has the big battery, 93.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, about 82 kilowatt hours usable. Uh, of course, we're gonna do all of our range testing, charging testing, all this stuff in the future. But for now, let's go take it up this pretty steep obstacle. I'm gonna show you around it now. And this is the obstacle that we will be going up. Of course, on video, it's always hard to showcase the true articulation levels that we're gonna get and really the difficulty of something like this. Now, of course, this isn't a full off-roader. This car is a daily driver that can handle a little bit of dirt. But I think this obstacle is gonna push the capabilities of the car. First off, from a ground clearance perspective, this is a super deep dip. If I stand in here, for example, take a look at this. It's up to pretty much my knees right here. My knee is about this. So I hope that gives you a little bit of perspective. It's always really, really hard to showcase this. And then of course, we're gonna have to pick the correct line for the Taycan because it does have this pretty big front lip that we wanna protect. In the rear, it will use the ESP systems with gravel mode to help lock a wheel that's spinning and send power to the correct one. Being electric all wheel drive, there's two independent motors. They are not connected through a drive shaft at all. So this car can really send the power front to rear instantly, depending on where the computers want to go. The Taycan is equipped with something called gravel mode. It's a mode specifically reserved for the Cross Turismo version. This is really interesting because Porsche actually went through all of the testing, engineering, and thought process, and they're like, oh, people are going to want to rally these things around. So what it does is it backs off ESP quite a bit. It will recalibrate the ABS system to give you a little bit of wheel lockup to build up, you know, some stuff in front of the wheel. So it should be good in the snow. We'll have to try that this winter. But of course, it's also going to help with the power management system and use a electronic locking diff simulated with the brake. So if we get one wheel spinning, if we just stay in the throttle, in theory, it should clamp down on that wheel and send power to the other side. We'll try it, of course. And well, I'm excited to see how gravel mode does. You join me inside the Taycan Cross Turismo now, and we're taking it up this obstacle. I have some friends of mine guiding me up this way. And uh, so we have a nice spotter for this, and we hopefully have some exterior camera shots. But really, 
<laughs> this is so interesting. So I have total control over throttle modulation. It's just walking its way up here. This is great. Look at this, I can just inch perfectly, no delay, that's so nice. Little bit of scrapage, no problem. We're just gonna stay in it, let it work, let it figure out where it needs to go. Let the diff software walk its way up, just stay on the throttle. Nice. We're going to continue straight up this way. Here we go, walking it up. This is great. Oh, the electric control is the most interesting part of this here. I can feel the diffs, the brakes grabbing, sending power where it needs to go. And up we go. That's so sick. <laughs> so part of why we're doing this particular expedition, if you will, in the Taycan, feel free to check out the full video on Inside EVs US, is to open up the conversation to where electric mobility can take you. Of course, I've taken this car across the country. We've broken the cannonball record with the Taycan. I've taken this car around the Nürburgring and top speed on the German Autobahn. And it excels at all of these things. But never did I think, hey, let's go across Ofer Pass in Colorado and take it off-roading and test the ground clearance and the traction management systems and everything like this. And well, here we are at 11,292 feet of elevation, climbing our way up to 11,700 feet up here. And um, yeah, we were passing Jeeps. We're <laughs> like, there's like crazy stuff out here. And everyone's like, what the hell are you doing here with this Porsche? <laughs> and the best part is we drove it up an amazing road on the way here and it was really good. So I think for me, um, this is more exciting than just showing the capabilities of the Taycan. It's opening up the conversation to where electric can take you. Now, I, in the Inside EVs video, I want to talk a little bit about um, electric charging when we're out here, for example. This is quite an interesting scenario. I'm just going to pull here, let these guys all come down, the next three cars, and then, of course, we're going to work our way up the hill. But look at this, even going to lift a wheel here. So we got a wheel in the air, and it just sends power where we need to go. How sick is this? So we'll just put it in park right here, uses the electric parking brake, not even a parking pod we're gonna be stressing out. Man, what an insane adventure. And the, the you know, specifically about the Taycan Cross Turismo, this is a car that has one, two, three, four, five suspension height settings. We have it in full lift, of course. Um, but it's so, I've never really done true, like real rock crawling with an electric car yet. Of course, I'm so excited to try the Rivian and Cybertruck and all these new electric adventure vehicles, but this is wildly cool that I can hear everything in nature. I can hear exactly what which tire is doing and the systems can react so much more quickly to wheel spin than a Range Rover or something like this. Now I've taken a lot of off-road cars, Ford Bronco, the new one, Jeep JLs all the time, of course, uh, Range Rovers, Defender 90 or Defender 110 and Land Cruiser. We did a whole off-road battle with. So I kind of get where the, these off-road overlanding cars are going and the Taycan just walked itself up the hardest part of this whole trail and did it drama free. We probably got a half a rotation on a wheel before it started to grab the brakes and send the power around. You can also option a locking rear differential, which I believe this car has. And so, yeah, we're just waiting here to let a couple cars go by and um, man, what an insanely cool experience it was to walk this up. So by the way, I also wanted to mention rock crawling like this. Usually <laughs> this is where you expose all the vehicle rattles and things. And don't get me wrong, I've driven Tycons with a couple of rattles, but this particular one just feels awesome. And we're on this loose, rocky surface. There's a giant cliff to my left. And <laughs> I'm just, you know, thumbs on the outside of the wheel and just walking this thing up this rock crawling path. This is like a mountain goat. We're gonna drop a wheel down in here. So let's see how this does. 
Awesome. A little articulation. A little spin. Nice. <laughs> We're going to go. This is a giant hole dip right here. We're just going to keep the momentum going. Keep it under the power. <laughs> The fact that we're doing this in this car is just crazy to me. And um, yeah, this is amazing. It's doing it. And here we have some elephant steps. So we're going to potentially have two tires in holes at the same time. So front tire, look at that instant torque. I can watch the power gauge distributing power front to rear. There it is spinning tires, just walking it around where it needs to go. <laughs> Everyone was looking at us like we were crazy bringing this thing out here. I have some guys from Porsche down there too. And I just love that we're doing this. I know I keep saying that, but it is truly impressive. So is the Taycan Cross Turismo sort of the ultimate do everything car? Well, a lot of people will say, hey, I'd never take my $100,000 plus car off-roading. I'd worry about damaging it. Well, guess what? If I got one, I would do this all the time in it. You guys see how we treat our sprinter. We take this thing off road and even though it's built for overlanding, we push it way beyond its limits. But that's what I enjoy doing with a car. Here in the Taycan, we would probably be able to experience the same thing. So if you guys think we should buy one, <laughs> I know I keep saying that. I haven't, I haven't said it to you guys, but I've been talking about it with some friends. If you guys think we should get a Taycan, um, we could definitely take it on some pretty, pretty cool adventures. And after seeing the capability here today, like this is so solidified that this car is actually quite capable. I would have never expected this to do so well. And it really is doing so well. <laughs> it's so cool. I can just hear spin, 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 spin. And it's just sending power where it needs to go. It's got about a 50-50 torque split front to rear right now under load. Obviously the temperatures are fine. We're not really stressing anything massively. So yeah, let's just flip it around. And it got a great 360 degree view camera. I have a front camera too. So if I come across an obstacle, the car will show me, you know, how close I am to hitting it. That's very helpful right there. It's not beeping at me though. <laughs> and off we go. Now we go down the hill. Thankfully we're still in gravel mode, which will tune the ABS. Yep to allow for a little bit more wheel lockup so we can obviously build up some dirt in front of the tire and slow it down. Of course, if you get too much, oh, the navigation is freaking out. If we get too much wheel lock, for example, with a normal ABS calibrated system, oop, lifting the back wheel there, <laughs> then of course that means, um, you know, you'll, you'll just roll because the car will never grab the brakes. So I love that there's a specific mode for this. And the views, man, you just can't beat Colorado, can you? I was just in Norway a couple days ago, and that was, I would say, probably the most beautiful place on earth. And now I'm in Colorado, and I would say this is probably the most beautiful place on earth. They both are equal to me. I think if I had to choose two places to live, it'd be Colorado and Norway. Let's head down that same obstacle. <laughs> the line's really important on the entry. I would say going up is easy in this car because you can just let the diffs figure it out, but going down really requires a proper, proper, proper line. So, Let's see, we're gonna drop it right down in this little thing, and then we're gonna na narrowly go around this little rock. So let's have our spotter help us here. Nice brake control, wheels in the air. It's still not freaking out ABS, that's great. Look at this, just crawling its way down. Wonderful, like it's nothing. Just a little roll over the hill here, let the back end settle. <laughs> like nothing, so great. It's amazing how this car can really drop wheels for being, again, so unbelievably stiff and sporty on a performance-oriented setting. And here it's literally dropping wheels down in. 
it really is quite impressive. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. I hope we're able to open the conversation to electric off-roading and adventures. This is an area we're going to be focusing on heavily, of course, with Tycon Cross Turismo, with Rivian, with Cybertruck, with all of these new Hummer EV, for example, electric vehicles. I love the idea of taking them out of their perceived elements, their perceived limits, and showing what they can actually do. And here we are on an off-roading trail in a car that could easily slide around the track all day long. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.